And I appreciate that all of you are still here. I promise to make it worth your while. I'm here today to talk about the Global Innovation Exchange. And this is as much about you as it is about the platform. But I want to make sure you understand my enthusiasm. I don't want you to think that I get up here and I'm paid to be a cheerleader. This is something that I really do believe in. And I think my story parallels a lot of yours. I started in high school as a first robotics dork, and I'm so proud of it. There I am, wearing my Team 357 hat, yay. And I knew that my mind was attuned to science, engineering, uh, mathematics, etc., and thought at one point that maybe this would be good enough. I mean, aren't robots playing sports against each other? Just, I mean, why do you need an excuse, right? Then I had another experience. Just after Hurricane Katrina, I went down to New Orleans and I served there gutting homes. I was the dirtiest, smelliest, most tired, and most satisfied I'd ever been in my life. And Mr. Jones set the trajectory for the rest of my career. He said that by serving him, we had restored his hope not just in his own future, but that of our nation. And I thought, wow, if I could do this much good by breaking stuff, what could I do by building it? So, as Nate said, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, I ran back and co-founded our Engineers Without Borders chapter and thought that I was just going to hit the ground and uh, be somebody who would revolutionize the developing world. Finally, they had Alex on their side. So here I was going to change everything. I went and I sat down with the uh, leader of our then defunct appropriate technology major and I told him all of my ideas and he said Alex I love your enthusiasm and you're about 30 years too late so you need to go read Schumacher you need to read Sachs and Easterly and and uh, Moyo and Neusma and all these other people so it was great great to be part of a community in that way not entirely unlike the community that GHTC has formed and I sat down at one of these meetings just like this brilliant engineer that I am and we were talking about capturing rainwater in El Salvador so we were talking about brainstorming concepts and I thought all right Oh, we're gonna capture rainwater. I'm gonna need something like a giant upside down umbrella and we'll have strut supports Maybe we'll do guy wires if we're gonna and as I'm halfway through that thought somebody says well Obviously, we're gonna collect water from the roofs and I thought the roofs That's a brilliant idea Thank goodness that person was in the room because if not the world of water collection at least in my life would have gone approximately I don't know into a uh, uh, nowhere or worse than that might have landed me in exactly the wrong kind of publications so I was glad to have something of a community but I knew there must be more information out there there had to be more information out there about this world of development and the people acting in it their innovations and I found microfiche library the appropriate technology library which I started working literally on microfiche they had to go dig it out of a box somewhere and show me how to use the reader the this is a library of physical books that was scanned into microfiche and then later I convinced them to buy the CD version which I helped them convert to DVDs and at the end of all this it is still books ranging from like 1920 to 1975 maybe 1980 so it's not live, and that discouraged me. And I thought, surely the internet must be full of grand ideas and people collaborating to do these things. So I found the CD3WD, which is, of course, the uh, CD library for the third world, which is uh, not the best term to be using anymore. And it was actually most of the same information with a couple of other things thrown in. So I was discouraged that there wasn't a, a more live community around these kinds of things. I went looking for funding and got lucky. I got very lucky with a Grand Challenges Exploration Grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So I've skipped a few steps to get to this point, but it showed me that it was possible and I didn't have to listen to the people who were saying, Alex, this is great and interesting work that you should be doing in your uh, spare time or after you get tenure. I didn't, I didn't like that answer. So I sought opportunities to make sure that I could do this full time and found that 
in the AAAS Science and Technology Policy Fellowship. This is an opportunity for one year or even more for people to step away from the bench, be you an early career, even uh, as early as postdoc or an engineer with a master's and some work experience are eligible for this program and they influence policy and the implementation of it right in Washington, DC. So if any of these institutions are of interest to you, USAID is pretty big up there because it uh, is one of the largest employers of fellows. If any of those are of interest, this might be a good program for you. In the first three months of my program as a fellow, I shook hands with a billionaire. I went bowling at the White House and accidentally contributed to the Ebola response in a good way. The other thing more recently that happened is that as a result of an unexpected DC handshake, I have my next step already set to be Managing Director of Global Engineering Programs at Purdue. So all of that as a result of this fellowship, and I have now a real path forward to be a development professional. Other things I've gotten to do are to go with Amy Smith and her team to Thailand, not Thailand, excuse me, Botswana, for an IDDS to be on, uh, not just an observer, but an organizer as part of their team. And that was a dream come true in a lot of ways. So if that piques anybody's interest, again, if you are early career, this could be great. If you're interested in a sabbatical or a change or exploring a change, this could be the thing for you. And I've got lots of these brochures up here and a sign up sheet. So this brings us back to the exchange. Yes, there's background music because this is epic. It deserves background music. The exchange is a place for ideas and innovations. It's a place for partners and partnership. It's a place for resources and technology for global impact and access and opportunities for funding. We'll get into the numbers on that soon, but this is a platform. It's a meeting place. It convenes and catalyzes, which is exactly the sort of thing I'm interested in. And I wonder if you can map what I just told you to all of these things and why it gets me so excited. More than anything else I've said so far, this excites me because of the potential it holds to finally bring us into an age where we don't have brilliant people operating in silos, in isolation, so that we end up with one plus one plus one plus one equals one. I want to see one plus one plus one equals five. That is good math in the world of development. How many people here solve problems? Raise your hand if you solve problems. Excellent, excellent. That is every hand in the room. Can I get some more hands if you solve problems with solving problems? If you are addressing at the programmatic and meta level how people solve problems, yeah? That's still like half the hands in the room. I'm, I'm gonna one-up that because this problem, <clears throat> this platform solves problems with solving problems with solving problems. You may be thinking, well, it's a platform for people to talk about stuff. I mean, there's lots of things out there where people get online and talk about things, even in the world of development. It's a platform that understands all of those needs and seeks to address every single one of them. If a water officer in Kenya wants to find a great water solution or a student has an idea to save lives, but it's stuck in the lab, somebody with uh, great skills who wants to do more with their skill set, their professional skills uh, in their spare time instead of, let, let's call it generic do-gooding. Um, a donor wanting to make sure that their uh, requests for applications are reaching the right people and on and on and on. So again, there are places out there that may do this and they're all on board. If you were to say, but Alex, I'm already a member of DevX, there it is. We're with them. They're with us. They're in the sandbox. Well, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, they're on board with us already. Um, MIT, Tell, Forum One, which is our implementer of uh, this platform, built, by the way, for you engineers out there in Drupal and based on a, a tag based taxonomy. We have a lot of very, very big, very, very strong partners. Yes, UK Aid. Uh, the Swedish aid agency, Canada, the UN are all on here. 
So one of the challenges with the platform is that it's only as good as the people on it. And this gives us a fantastic head start. The exchange is already growing fast. We soft launched in July. The password's very recently been removed, so now anybody can access it. And already we have over 1,000 innovations, over 1,400 innovators, and $246 million in funding advertised on that site. What can you, as innovators, do on the exchange? All this stuff and more. And I can show you a little bit of a demo uh, in a moment. But I want to dig deeper into just a few of those things. Find funding, save time, extend your influence, and connect. Do we have any women engineers out there? Yes? How many of you knew about this $18,000 international fellowship program supporting women pursuing full-time graduate or postdoctoral study? No hands. Ta-da! Now you do, thanks to this platform. Anybody out there interested in $1.5 million? Yeah, that's a couple of hands. In the realm of agricultural work, Africa Enterprise Challenge Fund, working in some challenging places, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Sierra Leone, etc. And anybody who didn't raise their hand for $1.5 million, would you raise your hand for $20 million? Yeah? We've got some interest in $20 million. And this is from Google, working on their impact challenge for those with disabilities. All of this is on there, and that's just a small slice of the $240 million up there so far. I expect that to pass a billion before too much time passes. This is the real deal. What are some of the innovations on there? So there are opportunities for funding that you can subscribe to, that you can get alerts on, all sorts of things. And people want, all the stakeholders involved, want to be involved with this because it speaks to their needs. How about the needs of an innovator? A lot of you said that you were problem solvers, so that likely means that you've come up with a thing or a process or something along those lines that will allow you to make an impact in the world. Or maybe you want to have an impact in the world. So this crosses all the sectors. We are sector agnostic. This is not just for people in global health or in agriculture or what have you. It's for people working on innovations for development. And I don't expect you to read all those out, but the Odon device, which is an assisted delivery device developed by an Argentinian car mechanic. A lot of global health people here. It's really neat. It was based on his uh, ideas that came out of uh, getting a wine cork to come out of a bottle once it had gotten pushed too far inside. And we have uh, the Pratt pouch, somewhere between a um, condom packet and a ketchup packet that keeps antiretrovirals shelf stable for months on end so that they can be given to mothers in case they need to use it when they have a home birth and it's ready to go and that is making a huge impact on maternal health. Sanergy for sanitation, we have education, agriculture, energy, digital development and all sorts of other things on there and we hope that you will connect with these folks, that you will be inspired by them to know that they're out there. Some of these are big names but I'm even more excited about people who haven't yet gotten international press that you might not know about. Here are some more examples just straight from the innovation page that happen to be associated with my team, the Higher Education Solutions Network. Uh, drying avocados, working with craftspeople, sanitation. Anybody here working on small-scale off-grid power? Yeah? That picture on the lower left there is a hydropower system. It's beautiful. I've seen it in person. And that comes out of MIT's IDIN, International Development Innovation Network. Beekeeping, bean threshing, all sorts of things. I envision a day when a senior design team tasked with doing something for development, or a researcher who says, I have an expertise in X and I want to apply that to development, can see that there are already 479 solar lanterns out there. So maybe join forces with one of those instead of starting fresh all by your lonesome. Maybe you'll look at some of those innovations and think, ah, I have a skill set, but I don't really, I don't have the bandwidth or, or the, uh, any other reason, the ability to own a project, I, I want to help. 
So every one of these innovations has a section that says what we need help with. We're already offering free legal counsel to any of the innovations on the site through one of our partners. And if you are um, someone who has skills, you'll be able to very easily search and say, I'm an electrical engineer. And then boom, here is 45 projects that could use your help today. It has a lot of power in that way to connect. Resources. The Engineering for Change webinar series. How many people are, are watchers of that? Excellent. Great. I've got like five hands. I wish it was everybody in the room. They're fantastic. But not everybody knows about them. So now more people know about them. Now everybody in this room knows about those resources. And there are common resources that are cross-cutting in lots of different ways. Now, a lot of the um, uh, platform could go in a lot of different places. If we've got a sanitation system that is operating in sub-Saharan Africa that impacts uh, women entrepreneurs and smallholder farmers, we could imagine on any other platform that getting stuck in any one of those places. Instead, thanks to the tag taxonomy, you'll find it in all of those places. Things won't get lost on here. And we're building features in day by day as we respond to our community. We also have communities built here, discussion pages, engines we call them, ways to bring things together that would otherwise be spread across the site. So here's the digital development page, mobile phone microscopy. I just saw a very interesting talk on uh, microscopy for diagnosing malaria. So here's mobile phone powered microscopy. That would also have a link then to a, an innovation which is the cell scope coming out of our uh, lab at Berkeley with DIL the Development Innovation Lab, and all sorts of other things there that you can connect with these people on certain topics, whatever the topic may be, and there are opportunities to comment and discuss and share and, and upvote and downvote and favorite and all these other sorts of things. If anybody wants to get in touch with Brennan Lake, the Program Director of the Technology Exchange Lab out of Cambridge, Massachusetts, he's on the site. So he's now not someone that you need to talk to me about and I need to talk to Alexis about. And Alexis needs to see if she has an opportunity to talk to Brennan next time she remembers that there was a guy who was interested in talking to him about a thing. Just go ahead and reach out. And it's a little less awkward than LinkedIn because if you're connecting through this platform or you mention the exchange, they know what you're talking about. Anybody interested in a fantastic small-scale NGO called These Hands in Botswana? Here it is. And that is Tabiso Black uh, in, with the balloon on his head, uh, whom I had the distinct pleasure of working with uh, for several weeks out in the field. Betty Aikaleni is from Uganda, and she is a fantastic entrepreneur someone who has built social enterprise that are for profit and are doing well in their model. They are uh, doing good by doing well. And I'm borrowing that from Paul Pollock. The kinds of people you might also interact with are way out on the fringes of development. When I say the fringes, I mean on the fringes of connectivity. So here's an example, Jacob Cam, whom I met when I was out in Botswana. And we are going all the way through the last mile with our partners. Things will have to ramp up, but we want to have beneficiaries, organizations who serve those beneficiaries, and every, every last mile step in between to get them onto this site in some way, shape, or form. We are thinking longer term about an SMS tie-in. Uh, and as I mentioned that, um, if you have an idea for connecting to this platform and you say, well, I've got a bunch of data. Do you have an API? Yes. If you ask us just about anything, I want to partner in this way or that way or some other way, the answer is probably going to be yes. And we would more than welcome you to that. So um, here's a question for you. I'm not going to use the whole hour um, that I assume I've been given. But would you like to see a four minute video about Jacob? We're going to do this by a show of hands to show you the types of people you might see there. Excellent. That's a whole lot of hands. So I'm going to show you Jacob. And this is a guy. Huh, that's interesting. Very good. That floored me. 
So here we go. So we'll so welcome to Jacob's. Yeah. No ticket required. We are just getting inside. Let's get going. Ah, oh, fortunately there is water today. <laughs> so this is my fireplace here, where I sit alone. Traditionally made fire, whatever you can call it. This is my charcoal stove. The charcoal that I, I'm so interested in making. An import from USA. Stove cat. This is the best. You use a little bit of wood. Yes. Yet it holds the heat for quite a long time. That is Jacob's works player. No jokes now. Those chairs are going to be new. Don't worry about them. Move the inside stone. This is a fisher board. Instead of hanging it there, I cut it and put it here as a window seat. Yeah, I chose my house number for myself. <laughs> With a horseshoe here. Yeah, yeah, this is my trail. Pull, pull this wire up, then it flashes. It used to be an old a caravan heater, so I then convert it. That is my orchard. I've got about one, three, three, four, five trees, orange, orange trees. And, and whether you believe it or not, this, this grey tree here, which looks very dead, exactly on the 25th of December, I eat, I eat grapes. I've told, I've told you that, that I'm not afraid of snakes. Oh I, I, I will take this one, this one and, I'm and I'm going to kill it right now. No, 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 no don't run away, come sir. Back. Come 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 back. I just want to show you how I kill them. <laughs> come. Oh, good. Oh, good. Good. <laughs> This is actually the container of that stove that I was showing there at the fireplace. So it was so nice looking, I didn't want to throw it away. So I decided to 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 harden it with this plywood on top. This is the original lid. And, and I like, I like it, so it so much that, that I made this art of an, of an elephant and my friend, my friend here. His, his <laughs> name is Kaze. So somebody, so somebody threw, threw it away? Yes, yes then, I, then I do. But, but now it's wet, yes, you can hear it. It's gone now. When I tell it free, 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 something to feed our cattle with. So this way the remaining part. So I try to make to make a bench with it. Yeah, like this part of it is a feeding towel. This thing, you know, this thing is just this pipe, the remaining of this pipe, then I cut them in round. I think this is your by things that are going around like this. My wind bell. I got them from some guys who were coming from Khaboroni who were delivering some refrigerators that are operating with solar panels. So maybe they were, they were supporting them with this. So now I'm still thinking what to do. I just picked this one up because of the sake of artwork. I, I make a little bit of thoughts. It used to be a bucket, and then my grandma's bucket is solar. I'm still remembering my grandma when this, when this one is on top of it. <laughs> yeah, I am trying to make everything that I pick up, I recycle them. Almost I, I, I can't just bypass anything that I see, it can, can be useful to me. How many people would like to have Jacob on their team? Yeah, that's a lot of hands. He's going to be on the exchange pretty soon. And this is the kind of reach that this platform offers. I also promised in the abstract that I would share some trends and best practices, things that I'm seeing in the world of development within USAID and beyond to those partners, etc. 
to help you frame how you set up, set up your projects and proposals, etc. I'm going to keep it really general and try to apply it to as many opportunities as I can. One is that the most effective proposals are likely to be demand driven or in some cases market driven, that they're really looking for a path to market for whatever product or process you're developing. Without having a clear problem statement, a clear theory of change, a clear idea of why this is needed out in the field, then it's unlikely to get much traction. There's a temptation with people who have an academic or a um, uh, industry lab that say, I have an expertise in this widget, and if only people had access to this widget, I'm sure it would save the world. Um, we call that people with hammers. Right? Looking around for nails to hit with them. Sometimes that can happen, but the exchange is a good place to find applications, to look for that bridge between the technical product and everything else that has to surround it. Like so many other speakers have said, Jackie of S Smart and uh, some of other speakers here, the technology is not the most important part. It's not the most important part of your innovation or your um, intervention. Second is that it should be evidence-based. For the very smallest of small grants, you might get away with a little hand-waving, but those opportunities are closing. You have to show rigorous evidence or at least put some numbers to it to say that, no, nah, you know, I think... Uh, Women smallholder farmers are um, probably wanting a new doohickey because I talked to one, or my, my, my friend talked to one and he said that she wanted a thing. Probably not going to get you too far. So when I applied for my uh, Gates Foundation grant, I did my literature research. And there is some literature out there in these peer-reviewed journals and that's growing uh, through venues like this to publish their proceedings through the um, development engineering journal very soon that's coming out of Berkeley etc uh, and published by uh, Elsevier and if you're able to make a case that this is not something that is isolated that this is something that is not only um, a need in the world but compared to the alternatives already on the market this is something that would compete better than the things that are already out there You've got to be able to prove that you know what the landscape is, that you're not operating in a vacuum of isolation. And again, the exchange will help with that. Third is to be collaborative and interdisciplinary. More and more, the agencies that fund these things realize that even the most brilliant insert discipline here, by their lonesome, are not going to make the cross all the chasms that there are between idea to impact, from prototype to product. So they need to see teams. They need to see teams that are um, put together with the right set of skills and also the right hearts. So this is borrowing a bit from the venture capital model. It borrows a bit from the startup world, from entrepreneurship. So a lot of the skills that are valuable there are valuable here. It should be aligned with the objectives and theory of change of the program. And you should be very, very carefully reading what is and is not covered by that scope. I'll point you to one resource, the Global Innovation Fund, which is modeled off of the Global Development Lab's DIV program, Development Innovation Ventures. They publish blog posts to help people applying to their millions and millions of dollars of funding. So this Global Innovation Fund put up a blog post 2,000 applications later. That gives even more advice. And you can look at that. A lot of the time, they end up with proposals that just don't fit within their mandate. And if people had only read it, maybe they could have tweaked what they were saying in a lot of ways. We have a benefit with our field that there are so many facets to what we do it's also a challenge because we have to choose which facet to highlight at any given time a theory of change is something that is pretty well known in the uh, the, the bureaucratic ends of development and it's pretty simple it says if X then Y a lot of times it's if this intervention happens then Y outcome will be the result. And then you boil that down 
through a whole bunch of different tools. It could be a log frame, a logical framework, where you say, if I accomplish these four things, they are necessary and sufficient to accomplish this. And then on and on and up from there, all the way to your major theory. Um, but think through, what are your base assumptions? What's your theory, and does it align with the program? Next is aligned with the program's scale and approach. If you think you can get by on $100,000 for a small scale early stage pilot, don't ask for a million, ask for 100,000. Find something that fits with that kind of a scale. With the approach, if they are very interested in solving global hunger by developing um, IP neutral superior crop seeds, then you probably don't want to pitch a fertilizer to them because that's, that's just not the way they do business, right? So make sure that you are aligned with them. I'm going to go a little further to say that the most, ex the most effective exchange members I expect to be open-minded. Be prepared when you go on there to find out that you've been Columbusing. You know what that is? Columbus Day is coming up. It means discovering something that has already been discovered. You were actually not the first, and you've got to be okay with that. I, I don't know, hit, punch a pillow, go scream outside, whatever you need to do, and then join up, join forces. Um, be collaborative as much as you can. Use the exchange to find those partners like Jacob, like it, an expert with a, in a discipline that is different than your own, maybe within your same institution or well beyond. Be active and subscribe. We offer notifications that are very granular. You can, you can set them to exactly however often and in uh, what ways you want to get your uh, notifications. And um, this isn't as, as much a, a LinkedIn kind of set it and forget it kind of thing. Uh, maybe if you are so fantastic and innovator, you'll be inundated with requests for people to collaborate with you. But we hope that this is going to be an active site. We hope that exchange members will be giving that there'll be people that, uh, because of the hearts we find in this world of development, will be as excited about giving as they are about receiving. And you know what happens when you have a community like that? All sorts of giving and receiving happens, and nobody keeps track of it, right? We're, we're all working towards the common causes together, right? It builds community when we are able to, um, to, to meet needs as well as have them met. And last is to be honest. There's a lot of talk in this field about celebrating failure, a lot about iteration, a lot about being honest. And this is a public forum. Funding agencies are on this. So if you're really, really concerned that when you submit a proposal six months later, you don't want them to go back and look at your comment that said, hey, I've done this before, and, and failed at it, and this is what I learned, and this is what I think everyone else should do, think carefully about that. What do you think that would do to that agency? Would they think less of you, that you've tried it before and failed and now have even better ideas? Or would they think more of you? I would imagine it's the latter in some cases, but that's going to be up to you. So how many people here think the Global Innov Innovation Exchange, as you've heard about it so far, is a good thing. It's every hand in the room. Now I'm going to speak directly to the Americans here. No longer can you say that your tax dollars didn't go to nothing good. <laughs> it is brand agnostic, but it is backed by USAID and the Global Development Lab. And we're very, very proud to be in that position. So. Getting on board involves going to the site, create an innovator profile, an innovation and organization profile. Think about ways that you could partner with us to add your database or link in through an API or have um, an expertise to own a section of the site where you would be a curator or a moderator. These little orange cards are all over the tables and you're welcome to grab one of them. It doesn't have a whole lot more information than the website <laughs> and our Twitter handle for you to get on. So if you don't get a card, don't worry about that. And the uh, other reminder is that I do have these AAAS things just right here up front. So uh, in closing, I'll say that the Global Innovation Exchange is open and you're all invited. Thanks.
Yeah, great presentation. Thank you for that. Uh, so I can repeat the questions, no problem. Next question. No, let me repeat that. He asked, are we inviting people to this space or allowing people to join this space who are along the entire value chain of development, uh, interventions, products, enterprise, everything like that, not just the, the innovators with a capital I, but people who are uh, uh, upstream and downstream in the supply chain who are supporters, etc. They are more than welcome to be here and it would be a great place for them to expand into the development business, so to speak. And the site is open to anyone who wants to join. There are no longer velvet ropes with a password or anything around the site. So we welcome uh, anybody in any organization who would like to be part of this community. Yeah, next question. Yeah, so uh, the question is, what is our connection with uh, Tsinghua University in China? I would love to tell you that, but we have 75 plus partners, and I would have to look it up. So I can promise to get back to you on that. Sure, so uh, I, I would be happy to dive deep into any of these partners, but again, I'd have to look it up, and I'm happy to do that. Next question. Yes. All right, so she's asking, where do we put problems on the site? And I've got some um, pages here that I have saved. And if the live site is working, then we can go take a look at that. Now, we're operating at approximately <laughs> for resolution on this uh, computer. It looks like 1024 to 768, but, oh, lovely. Um, but at any rate, um, there are places for browsing and adding innovations, places to browse and add funding opportunities. There's resources, there's engines, and there's more. So there is uh, an opportunity on the site to add needs, and that is coming. The, the issue that we have seen in the past is that a lot of times these needs need a little bit of fleshing out before we can trust them. Um, before it, it's more than um, a semi-English, almost complete sentence about a need that doesn't have much context, etc. We do want that information on the site. What I can say right now we do absolutely have is a place within each innovation for you to post what your needs are. And that's something that I mentioned. Here's a block. How can you help? This is an innovation by Betty uh, Ikaleni. And she's saying these are the ways that you could help this particular innovation. So you're asking, we have market research. We, have, we, have, we know what the needs on the ground are. Where can I post those? And that is uh, very soon to come. So great question. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Sure, so what I would point you to right away is uh, discussions. And even before we have the, uh, the entire, pro oh, interesting, it's gone to this model, um, is to, to the discussion section and there are all these kind of discussions happening we could view all or we could add a new discussion so if you were to do that as a person that's logged in it's free to uh, join of course and um, yeah we got to log in to get there but um, it, you can join through LinkedIn Facebook Google just your email address however it is you want to join and go ahead and start that discussion there which is kind of the catch-all for things that don't have a proper um, I would say um, content type built around them just yet and you're welcome to reach out to me. I've got a whole bunch of business cards I'll, I'll put up here as well. Sir. Mm. It, is there moderation and um, any sort of control over the content on the site? So uh, that's a good question. For some content types, they are controlled by people who are um, given the key to do that and for example right here with the higher education solutions network they scroll down a bit and see that the point of contact is me and administrators and me are able to change this page so I have control as a member of this organization over what appears here do I have control over the comments at the bottom not yet we're taking a freedom first approach to this and we're hoping it isn't just overrun with spam we've got filters in place but keep in mind again that this is uh, to put on my my uh, nerd hat again it's built in Drupal so it's a CMS content management system that is open source and very very powerful lots of plugins lots of opportunities so that means that it isn't um, proprietary in a way that it would take us a long time to develop features. All we have to do is install and enable the anti-spam, one of the many anti-spam um, modules, and we'd be able to apply that. We did talk a long time about uh, control of information, moderation, whatever, even if somebody puts up an innovation and claims that it's connected to the Higher Education Solutions Network. Can they do that or do I have to put the badge on them? Because I know that um, I, I can verify that. Would we want to have, uh, we're already thinking about badges and other ways to grant legitimacy and uh, make things obvious and tag things further. Uh, and it's all possible. Right now, again, we're taking a freedom first kind of approach. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. I appreciate that, sir. Thank you. To to repeat, but so there we go. To repeat briefly, um, we already have a new partner, and it's a fantastic one. I triple E. <laughs> Other questions? Yes, ma'am. Sure. Um, demonstrate a search on the site. So that's one of the bugs I have to hand them, that um, this search button way up top is a little bit wonky. Um, let's go ahead and type in stove, right? And then we'll have a results come up that's going to be across the whole site. No matter what, it's an innovation, it's a person named uh, Jonathan Stove, whatever it is. So here's our results, and we're getting innovations blah, blah, but I don't know if I want to look through all these 40 oh gosh there's pages of them oh, good thing over on the side here I can filter so they've got different tags different sectors if we're talking about uh, something that impacts gender or just energy or health or whatever or a region or a country or what have you you can go ahead and tick any of these boxes so let's go ahead and tick the ones that wow a stove related to wash that sounds interesting so I'll tick that box and now I'm down to just those two results biomass multitasking cook stove interesting if it's related to wash I bet I know what the biomass is it's poop if just I would, that's my guess 
But yes, that's how the search function works. And within some of these other ones, you'll find at the top, yeah, that you have access to that as well. Like, let's go to um, innovations, for example. And then you'll see here the same uh, ability to filter. And if I go to innovation, whoops, innovation, come on now, innovations, browse that down. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'm going to blame the computer on this. Innovations. Find other innovators, for example. So this is where we have our innovators. And now when you use the search bar that pops up top here, you're just looking at innovators. So if I wanted to show you Betty again, this is how I'd go ahead and find uh, Betty's profile on the site. And there she is. Or I could have found her by searching, by limiting the country to just Uganda. And she would have been one of the results. And if you have any comments on it, please feel free to feed them through me or there's a feedback button on the side there that makes it really easy to provide your feedback direct to the development team. I'll go ahead and click on that and see what happens. That way it knows what page you're on and you can even point to a little doohickey on the page and say this thingy doesn't work or it doesn't do what I expect it to do or what have you. We are very much uh, willing to continue to iterate on this site. It's nowhere near finished but my goodness has it started. All right, thank you.